I have to say, for me, it is a <clears throat> great pleasure to be back in... Can you hear me? This seems to be... Is it working for you at the back there? I have to get up here, do I? I don't like it up here, though. It's too... It's too isolating. Oh, well, anyway, okay, let me say anyway what a pleasure it is to be back in Berlin, which for me applies for several reasons. One is that it's a sort of lovable and livable city. Another is, of course, its historic role. There is a third one, which sort of concerns the themes of this conference, um, which goes back to um, November 1989 because it so happened um, that I was in the city in November 1989, and uh, I'd been talking to dissidents in what was then East Germany at the time, and we were in a conference um, not very far from the wall, and because there were some East Germans in our conference, they heard from people on the other side of the wall that the wall was going to be opened. And so... I had the privilege of uh, actually being one of the first people ever to get up on top of the Berlin Wall when it was opened. And there's quite a sort of amusing story attached to that that actually has some resonance with what I want to say a bit later on because we were there was hardly anyone up on the wall. They were putting these ladders up on the wall, right? We were starting to climb up these ladders. But this TV crew stopped us and said no, no, you can't go up before us. We've got to film you making history. So they got on top of the wall and they filmed us going onto the wall. And to me, well, that shows something about, you know, the televisual nature of of our age, really. And I want to argue a bit later on that people often misunderstand what globalization means for us because they don't see that it is primarily carried by electronic communication, not primarily by the marketplace. And I'll have a certain amount to say about that. It is also, you know, an experience um, at that time that stayed with me. Um, As I say, we went through to East Berlin two or three days before the wall was open, not, of course, knowing that it was going to be open. And most people here are probably a generation not to have done that. But the guards, the East German guards, were truly horrible. I mean, they were real. When you went through, you know, you could see these were guys who'd shot people. They looked surly. They were so aggressive uh, to Westerners coming through the wall. And then the day after the wall was opened, um, we went back into East Berlin. And I've never seen any such transformation before or since in people because they were smiling, they were open. They were chatty. And ever since, I've wondered which was the true self of the guards because they were like completely different people once the wall had been opened. And I suppose my conclusion is that they, as it were, reflect two sides of our nature as human beings, that we do have this capacity for hatred. We do have this capacity for um, uh, following orders for command and control. But... There is another side, which is that of humor, openness, communication, and certainly these these guys had both, and I don't know to this day really which was the primary one. I mean, it was a fantastic night. There were all these trabants coming through. People were throwing all this champagne down on them. The people driving these trabants had these maps where the whole of West Berlin was blanked out because you weren't allowed to know what was going on in West Berlin. I, came, I went for a walk a bit earlier this afternoon. I came back in this building where, as you'll see, there is an exhibition on the history of Berlin. And down there, there is a Trabant, one of the few... You know what a Trabant is, the little cars they drove in East Germany? Well, there's a nice little green version down there for those who want to get in touch with history in a sort of concrete way. Well, I mean, it, everyone can see, and this point was made earlier this afternoon, the opening of the wall was the opening of simply a war, but it was a transformation of global society which affected Africa as much as it did every continent across the world. And I think, you know, there's a quote from Churchill that I noted down 
are sort of relevant for this, I think sort of food for thought now already, where Churchill said, the inherent vice of capitalism is the unequal sharing of burdens. You can say that again, can't you, after the financial crisis? The inherent virtue of socialism, he said, is the equal sharing of miseries. And, you know, those were the two sides, if you like, of the Berlin Wall. And I think you could say we're still wrestling with that paradox of how you produce a, a mixing of those two that will create a decent society that avoids the, the problems of each of them. No one has really find a way of recombining them. And I think, you know, if you look at Churchill, says the, the inherent vice of capitalism is the unequal sharing of, of, birth, of blessings. Well, so true at the moment, because in my country, and no doubt many other countries here, the poor are being asked to pick up the costs of the follies of the rich. That is exactly what's happening in Western countries. So it seems to me quite an apposite observation.